Hello everyone and welcome to your week one lesson. For this lecture or lesson, you were supposed to read chapter one in your textbook. So this was the Practically Speaking textbook and it was pages one to 19. Now the first couple of pages really go over what is communication, why does public speaking matter, all of that fun stuff. So while I'm not necessarily going to be talking about that in today's lecture, I do want to make sure that you understand those terms and everything in case they show up on quizzes later. So really what I want to talk to you about today is ethics. Or really ethical communication. So this is the, the do's and the don'ts of the public speaking method. And I'm wearing my Zero to Hero, oops, on this side, Zero to Hero t-shirt today. Uh, Hercules, I think, is a super ethical person in the Disney movies, more so than in regular Greek mythology. He always wants to do right by the gods, do right by Meg, do right by the people. So that's why I wanted to wear my little baby Hercules and baby Pegasus t-shirt today. But I think ethics are really important, especially when you get in front of people. I mean, we are going to make a decision on whether or not we believe you within the first couple of seconds of your speech. And we make those decisions based on the ethical arguments that you present or the kinds of sources that you use. And even really at its boiling point, the topic that you choose, right? Your topics should be ethical. Your behaviors should be ethical and the standards that you argue or inform us on should also be ethical. So this is really the last couple of pages in your textbook, but I wanna spend the next 30 to 40 minutes really making sure that we understand what it means to be an ethical speaker and then how to present ethical speeches. Really, what kind of topics should I give speeches on and what kind of topics should I avoid giving speeches on? So what we're going to talk about today is how to avoid plagiarism that looks incredibly different in a speech than it does in a paper. So how do you avoid plagiarism when there's a bunch of sources and internet websites and song lyrics that you can just take and use in your speech? How do we engage in ethical behaviors? And I want to give you some tips on navigating some speech anxiety. That's not really in your reading, but I do want to give you some tips about that today, some practices that you can do some things. All right, so first, how are we going to define ethics? Well, ethics are the standards used to discriminate between right and wrong, good and bad, both in thought and in action. Right? Ethics guide the choices that we make in all aspects of our lives. And we learn this very, very early on when we're young, right? That golden rule, do one to others as you want done to you. And kids, like little kids, really struggle with this. They know that sharing is good, but they want to be selfish and hang on to that toy so no one else can play with it. So as we age, we continuously practice our ethical standards, both in action and in thought. So the six guidelines to ethical speaking, how to be an ethical speaker. Well, first, you should always be speaking to benefit your listeners. You're going to read about topics next and your audience next, and your audience is really, really important. In fact, every single speech that you give in this class, every single presentation that you give in other classes, in the you know working world, if you're giving a best man speech or maid of honor speech, you should always do so with your audience in mind. So what you are saying should benefit the listener somehow. You're teaching me this thing that can benefit my life. You're arguing this challenge to benefit society. So whatever it is you're speaking, you should be speaking to benefit your listeners. That's the first guideline to being ethical. The second is that you should be speaking about important topics. There's a lots of things going on in the world right now. So many things. Um, so you want to choose topics that are important, that have justification, that give the listener a reason to listen. You'll hear me refer to this as significance and relevance. 
We justify our topics by explaining what makes them significant or important universally and what makes them relevant or relatable to our audience. So why should our audience care? What makes this important? Your speeches should promote positive ethical values, right? We don't want to give speeches that can hurt someone or convince a group of people to do something dangerous. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later, but promote positive ethical values. The fourth is to use truthful and valid reasoning. So we want to make sure that the sources that we use are true, that they're correct, that they're not biased. You're going to have an entire lesson plan for evidence in week five, right before we go over informative speaking, and I like to use Game of Thrones for that. So you'll learn how to evaluate your sources to make sure that the, the evidence that you're using is truthful and it's well reasoned. You want to consider your consequences of what you say. You know, words have meaning and they have emotions attached to them. And we can't really control people's emotions as much as we think we can. I might say a word and you might have a different reaction to that word than I do. So you have to consider the consequences of your speech. What can happen? What can incite? What can be evoked if I give this speech? Will something bad happen? Will something good happen? And as a speaker, you're responsible for that. So consider the consequences of what you say in your speeches. And finally, you should be speaking to strive to improve yourself. Yes, we want to benefit our listeners. Yes, we want to be talking about important topics. But we also want to improve ourselves, challenge ourselves a little bit. So, you know, giving a speech about that English paper that you wrote two years ago when you were in high school, that's not really challenging. You've already done the research. Challenge yourself. Pick something new. Think outside of the box and engage in positive ethics. All right, so those are the six guidelines to being ethical. But how do we do this in action? What does this sound like? What does this look like in our speeches? Well, you have a couple of different speaker considerations that you got to make. So there are five ways in which a speaker can be considered illegal or unethical when giving a speech. And I'm going to go over all of these in way more detail. So the first is plagiarism. You want to avoid that at all costs. You've learned this in your um, English classes and, and everything like that. So avoid plagiarism. We'll talk about what it looks like in a speech, how to avoid it, that kind of stuff. The next thing that you want to do is avoid defamatory speech, which is a little bit different than hate speech and freedom of speech. So we're going to kind of talk about those differences there. You don't want to put your audience in potential harm or present danger. And you obviously cannot give speeches about breaking the law. So we can challenge laws and speeches, but we cannot break them. And then finally, we have to be civil. We have always got to think about the audience and how they might take these, the things that we say. So those are the speaker considerations. Really, you're going to have those angels on your shoulder and you're going to have those devils on your shoulder. Another Disney reference. If anybody watches The Emperor's New Groove, there's the, the Krunk, the character Krunk. And he's kind of one of the villains, but he's always thinking about his actions and what's going to happen. And the little Krunks kind of pop up on his shoulders and they go, hey, hey, hey. Uh, what you're doing might not be good. Hey, go ahead and do it. It's okay, right? So we want to listen to those those angels and not those devils on our shoulders. So listen to that good moral voice when you're picking your topics and stuff like that. And this isn't just for speaking like a speech. This is for communicating with everyone, right? Communication is nonverbal. It's talk. It's memes that we post on Facebook. It's tweets that we make at, you know, midnight. All right. So think about what you say, because what you say, what you post, what you do, where you look, how you react to someone, all of that has meaning that gets interpreted. And there's going to be consequences based off of that. All right. So first, you got to avoid plagiarism. And when you watch the examples uh, clip that I have below this for plagiarism, this little picture of Michelle Obama that I have makes sense. But it's a clip of Michelle Obama's speech when Barack was, uh, when we were voting for Obama for the first time, and then Melania's speech when we were voting for Trump for the first time in 2016. So you're going to look at those speeches side by side, and 
I think you'll see some interesting things there. All right, but plagiarism is using someone else's words, phrases, ideas, or creative or unique organizational concepts and claiming them as your own. So when in doubt, cite it out. I think it's easier to understand using someone else's words, right? If you find a New York Times article and you just copy the sentence and paste it into your speech, that would be plagiarism. But when you take someone's creative ideas and kind of claim them as your own, that's technically considered plagiarism too. And, you know, the social media websites or, or applications like TikTok is so popular right now and Vine was its predecessor. But we'll see these content creators, even if you think about Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, we'll see these, these influencers or these content creators go on these apps like TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, those kinds of things, and post these really cool videos of changing into Hogwarts characters or giving presentations or doing dances and all these things. And then slowly but surely, people start taking those dances. They start taking that theme. They start taking the literal audio from those videos and don't even give the influencer or the creator credit. They just redo that dance or remake that video or redo that theme and they don't even pay back to the person that originally created it. So not only is plagiarism, you know, words and writing and, and sources and stuff like that, but it's someone's, you know, creative, novel, unique idea and making other people believe that that was your idea. So if you find something that's written in a cool way or spoken in an awesome delivery style and you kind of take that as your own, that would be plagiarism. So for speeches, you know, you're not going to be giving your audience a works cited page or a reference page or a bibliography that has all of your sources listed on it. We're not going to be reading that during your speech. So you're going to be responsible for citing out loud in your speech where you're getting these sources. And that might sound something like, according to a March 13th, 2019 New York Times article, the writer stated that, all right? So every time you bring in information that's not your own, that you looked up, that you found somewhere else, you have to give an oral citation. And we'll talk about what that sounds like and what it looks like and how to do it and how to check to make sure that all your sources are cited correctly. But you have to, have to, have to cite your sources inside your speech while you're giving it. So when in doubt, cite it out. Um, let me know if you need help. I've been doing this for years. I competed for the speech team when I was in college. I coached the speech team here at Harper. So we're constantly citing our sources out loud. So make sure that if you are confused about how to cite it or what to say or when you need an author versus when you don't need an author, just let me know. But in week five, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So hang tight on that for now and don't freak out about it too much. But uh, it is very, very important. All right, the second thing that you want to avoid is defamation. And defamatory speech is when a speaker makes claims against a person's character that cannot be supported with evidence. And the major thing that separates defamation from hate speech is defamation has the power to damage someone's reputation. All right, and they're not founded in facts. So hate speech might sound like a stereotype or a generalization or you're just being mean to someone, right? I can say that all jocks are stupid because that's like a stereotype in media. But if I say something like the high school football coach is engaging in sexually explicit activities to the players in the locker room, that's way different than saying the football team is dumb and the football coach is stupid, right? So if what I'm saying is not true and it's not rooted in facts and it has the ability to, you know, really damage a character's reputation, that would be defamation. There's that scene in Mean Girls, if you guys watch Mean Girls, where they are writing things in the burn book. It's like a yearbook that they cut pictures out of and they write mean things next to each other. And one of the characters in the book 
makes a comment about her math teacher about how she pushes people. She keeps calling me a pusher. I think she pushes drugs. And then when this burn book gets publicized to all of the characters at the end of the movie, there has to be a serious investigation into the teacher because one of the claims that was written in this burn book ended up being true. So they had to start investigating all of the claims and Mrs. Norberry, the character in it, could have really lost her job because of this thing that was said about her that wasn't true. So hate speech is a little bit different than defamation because hate speech is just mean things that you say about people that are inappropriate. But defamation are claims that are made about people in positions of power that could really ruin their reputation. And all of that is different than freedom of speech, right? We live in a country where freedom of speech is our right. So we are able to talk about things that bother us and, and protests and, and riot and, and all of these things, but you cannot engage in defamation speech. It is illegal. And if you are inaccurate and untrue, you could be punished by law for saying something that's not true that ruins another person's reputation. So. You know, be careful with freedom of speech. There's a fine line that you want to walk and you definitely want to consider your audience. Um, you want to have factual sources in your speeches, you know, speak about things that matter to you. But uh, defamation is illegal. Another example of defamation is two of our favorite, not so favorite people, right? I don't know if you guys remember the, the, the Taylor Gate, the little Snapchat video that Kim Kardashian posted where... Kanye West had Taylor Swift on the cell phone and she he asked her about this lyric that he wanted to put in his song, which was actually, I made that bitch famous. And on video, you can hear Taylor Swift saying, yeah, that's, that's totally cool that you're asking me. Go ahead and put that lyric in your song. But it was, you know, spliced and cut at that exact moment where we heard Taylor agreeing to something, but we didn't know what she was agreeing to. And the Wests, have now famously said that it was to this line. And actually, it was recently, a couple of months ago, um, that, or here in 2020 at least, a couple of months ago, that uh, the truth came out and that call was totally manipulated and that is not what Taylor Swift was agreeing to. But when Kanye did this, and when Kim posted this on Snapchat, it really, really destroyed Taylor's reputation. I mean, like, people really hated her for this. That she's making a big deal out of Kanye when she gave Kanye permission for the song lyric. And her reputation tanked so much so that she had to make her sixth studio album and title it Reputation. And every song was about reclaiming that reputation. I'm a big Taylor Swift fan, so... I really like to spend a lot of time on this slide because sometimes we accidentally say things in our speeches that aren't true, that have a powerful implication attached to it. So please be careful with what you say and how you word what you say and avoid defamation. It is illegal. Okay? The next thing that I want to talk about is potential harm. You cannot put your audience in clear and present danger. And this is when the speaker in their speech puts their audience in a position that can lead to a dangerous situation or scenario, either right there in the classroom, you know, during the speech, or later on at home, all right? So you never, ever, 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 ever wanna give a speech that could potentially hurt someone else. And we see stuff like this on YouTube, on TikTok, on Vine, on Instagram all the time with these trends, right? Here's how to do the Tide Pod Challenge in three seconds, but then if I go home and I follow your speech and bite into that Tide Pod and swallow all of those chemicals and die, I mean, at the end of the day, you're kind of responsible for that because you taught me how to do it and you encouraged these behaviors in me. So every semester I get some dummy that thinks that they're being funny and wants to do a, a speech that can put their audience in harm, in, in a dangerous scenario. So please just be careful with the topics that you choose, right? How to run across Lakeshore Drive in the middle of Chicago rush hour, not a good speech idea, right? Because if I run through Lakeshore Drive and get hit by a car, you're at fault there. I mean, I'm at fault too for believing your stupid, idiotic speech but you're at fault for giving the speech and convincing me to do it. So 
Just be careful with what you pick. You cannot choose topics that have the potential to harm someone in the moment, after the speech, later on in a different date, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, you can't give speeches that promote law-breaking, right? So speeches that promote law-breaking are considered unethical, it's illegal, and it should always be avoided. You can challenge the law, but you cannot break it, right? So how to get to campus in five minutes and avoid all of the cops and speed, not a good speech. I think we need to increase the speed limits around the Schaumburg, Palatine, Hoffman Estates, Elgin area. Good speech. So we can challenge laws that we believe are too strict or too loose or not right or not ethical or that are concerning us, but we can't give speeches that entice breaking the law, all right? A law is a law, and if you break it, that is illegal. You can go to jail. You cannot give a speech that promotes law breaking but you can give a speech that promotes challenging a law that we don't agree with or we feel is outdated or unethical, All right? And the last thing that I wanna talk about regarding ethics are civility clauses, okay? You want to engage in civility when you communicate behaviors, All right? So civility are behaviors that foster respect and harmoniously productive relationships. If you think that your speech could potentially offend someone, chances are it will, and you need to rethink that speech topic. I'm not saying that you can't give speeches about uncomfortable hot button issues, right? Uh, uh, all of the like political policies that are in place right now, Immigration is popular. Gun control is popular. Um, minimum wage is popular, right? There's all these politically right-leaning and politically left-leaning topics that are really considered hot-button issues that are really touchy to people. Uh, those make the greatest speech topics, in my opinion. You just have to make sure that you're engaging in positive ethics as you do so, right? We can't say all those lefters are dumb because they want to take away our guns, but we can't say all those writers are rude because they're killing people, right? We can't say those things in our speeches because they're just not true and they're not factual. So we want to make sure that when we use these hot button speech topics that we do so being civil. And the first video that I posted in this little content unit is the SNL sketch, where all of the characters are sitting at the Thanksgiving table and they're about to have dinner and they start talking about race and, and LGBT issues and politics and, and there's a funny little Adele twist to it. But that happens in my family all of the time, especially, you know, the, these past couple of years here in 2020. But, uh... We've got to be careful with what we say. We've got to be considerate with how we say what we say. And we've always got to think about our audience. All right. So really, that's chapter one in a nutshell. Please email me any questions that you have. I want to go over a little bit of public speaking anxiety tips because the number one thing that happens for first-time public speakers, especially first-time college students when they take this class, is they get really, really nervous about speeches. And I'm, I'm speaking, giving, doing this class online is unique because it's through a computer screen. So I think some of those nerves are a little gone. But you know, when you give a speech in person, those nerves are gonna shoot back up. So I just want you to remember that you can be delivering the greatest speech in front of your mirror 50 times in your bedroom and you're not nervous at all. And then the second you go to give your speech in front of someone, all of a sudden your speech is like 12 minutes long or one minute long and it's really, really fast or really, really short. And that's because the nerves kind of come into play here. So before your first speech, I really recommend a couple of techniques. In the delivery unit in a couple of weeks, in, in three weeks from now, you're going to watch a TED Talk of a speaker who gives excellent vocal warm-up strategies. So really pay attention to that. There's actually a, an extra credit assignment associated with that. But really focus on breathing. 
All right, so when you start to feel yourself get nervous about your speech, I want you to breathe in. Hold your breath here for three to five seconds and then slowly exhale. Do that about three to five times and it'll put you in a more calmer position. Practice makes perfect. So the more you practice your speech, the more confident you're gonna get. And practice in front of an audience makes it perfect, perfect. So what I recommend is practicing your speech alone in your bedroom. Practice your speech in front of your mirror. Record yourself practicing your speech and provide comments or details when you watch it back. Then practice your speech in front of someone that you really trust, a parent, a sibling, a loved one, a friend. Then start bringing in more people. Practice it in front of three people. Practice it in front of five. Uh, go on a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live and perform your speech and open the comments so you can see people commenting real time. The more you get your speech in front of people, the less afraid you're going to be when you give it for your grade, the less nervous you're going to be when you're performing it for real. So really getting it in front of an audience is excellent. So my three recommendations is focus on breathing. You know, allow yourself a few moments before you give your speech to engage in breathing. Practice it with a recorded device and watch your own performance back so you can get really critical about yourself and see and hear what you're doing. And then practice it in front of an audience, at least three to five people. And then invite them to give you feedback after your speech. I know that that's all easier said than done. I'm happy to hop on a Skype call with you and watch your speech and give you feedback if you want, as long as it's during my virtual office hours. So please, whatever I can do to help you in this class, let me know. And um, that's all I have for chapter one. You're going to have a couple more lessons this week that you'll want to do, some more assignments that you'll want to do. But I always like doing this lecture because I think that that's important to see the ethics in action and to see what to avoid and what not to avoid. All right, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email, shoot me a Skype message, schedule a time to video conference me. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. With that, you're all done with this video lecture and good luck with your assignments and I will see you soon.